I know Peter may run around all day and night fighting for lost causes, and he doesn't give a damn about the law of the land, whatever that is, but what's the difference? Legal or illegal? When the hell did you start caring about what was legal or not? What's right that counts, and you know that. What do I care about what any of the kids in this college think about what Peter thinks? Peter's the only one who cares. The only one who cares about what life is like still like on this planet. Damn it, the rest of them are all a bunch of mush. Boy, has it changed. You remember when we were in graduate school at Berkeley together? You remember what it was like then? We were different. We were angry. We were alive. We hated the right things. We hated the army. We hated our parents. We hated the goddamn CIA. But we fought. We fought. We made it better. You remember the time we got bombed? Remember the time we got bombed? Don't laugh. You remember. We went down to Western Union, and we sent that telegram to J. Edgar Hoover telling him what we thought he was. We didn't sign it, but we sent it. That took guts. And then the next morning, while well, we still felt the same way, went down to the goddamn Bank of America and closed out our savings accounts and went in the street and tore the checks in a thousand pieces and threw them in the air. I don't know what happened in the last 10 years. You're going to tell me, maybe. Maybe you'll tell me what the hell happened in the last 10 years in America. But it's different. There are no rebels left. I don't know where they're going to come from, the new ones. We had to sell out. Yeah, I know that. I know we had to. We had to. I had to. I had to. I got married. I had three kids. I had to support them. What choice did I have? What choice did any of us have? But that's no reason for them, the kids being like what they are today. That's no excuse. Who's going to come and fight the battles if nobody's angry anymore? If a bunch of mushy kids walking, what are you smoking that shit for, for Christ's sakes? It's how I prepare for my classes. They are killing seals out in Dawson Bay. <laughs> what are you laughing at? They're laughing because for the past three semesters, you've broken into this room maybe 20 times with some earth-shattering announcement about the imminent death of the American dream. Yeah. This last month was all a garbage floating in the Mississippi River that was killing the shrimp. And yesterday was the rumor that someone found bacteria in two cans of chicken noodle soup in Gary, Indiana. Yeah. But this time I saw it, okay? Peter, this class is about that which is legal about the nature and workings of the law under our constitutional guarantee. Seals do not concern us here. What is happening to them out there is not illegal. It is illegal. No, it is not illegal, Peter. These are not harp seals out in Newfoundland. These are chihuahua seals. They're an endangered species. There are perhaps 1,000 of them left in existence. All right, if they're an endangered species, then they're protected under the law. If you'd been here at the beginning of the class, you would have had an opportunity to read this. Chief Justice Holmes, 1912. Rich man, poor man, beggar man, thief. All are equal in the eyes of the law, including seals. But you better get proof. Okay, I'll see you next week. I can get proof. Peter! When did you shoot this? My poor lass. Yesterday they were out there bashing away. He'll be out there tonight, too. Finally got the foreman to tell us what it was all about. They're building an Air Force base up there. A huge one. What are they killing the seals for? They think the seals will get in the way. You know, breeding on the runways or something. Jesus, look at them. You can't do it. It's against the law. If they're an endangered species, those animals are protected under the law. Oh, how can we stop them? I guess it's up to me. I'm so mad I'm ready to go to Washington. Jeez, when? What about your classes here? I'll talk to the dean. Old blade out, new blade in. Ah, empty. What do you suggest we do about the seal, sir? I suggest you get on that plane and go to Washington. Look at this damn thing. Never stop to think that the manufacturers of these damn things don't want us to open them. But you're wrong about the senator. If I were you, I'd uh, start with the military. Now, stand back. Unbelievable. Hardly. Simple goddamn plot to make us buy more razor blades. Well, don't just stand there. Go home and get packed. Get on a plane. Sir, I can afford to fly to Washington? Roger, the school will pay for your trip. Terrific, thank on you. On one condition, you stop off in Canton, Ohio on your way back here and get these dirty bastards, too.
evening. Can I help you? I hope so. I need a room for a couple of days. I'm Professor Roger Keller. Professor? Good. And I need a ten-letter word beginning with L and ending with S, meaning talkative. Loquacious? Loquacious. Yes, that fits rather nicely. Now, how about a nine-letter word? How about a room? Bill at the airport center, huh? Bill? My nephew, Bill. On the porter? A lawyer in two years. Why didn't you say so? Professor, I'm going to give you the best room in the hotel. Room four. George Wallace did that during the Civil Rights March, about eight years ago. It has a rather remarkable view of the Jefferson Memorial. Truly? Mm -hmm. You know, Thomas Jefferson sat in a hotel room in Philadelphia, and in one weekend, he wrote the Declaration of Independence. And without air conditioning or room service. Absolutely. The law you've mentioned, Professor, specifically allows us to seek out and destroy wildlife of any kind in case of a national emergency. I wasn't aware that we had a national emergency situation, Colonel. What is our national emergency? Chinese ICBMs. I mean Russian ICBMs. Chinese. Oh, come on, Colonel. Haven't you read the newspapers? We're in love with the Chinese. They're sending us ping pong players and acrobats. And we're sending them Elton John and Coca-Cola. They're just buying time, Professor. Look, that's China. Taken from one of our spy satellites 200 miles in the air. If you look closely, you can see the ICBM bases. I don't see anything. Where? There. The tiny black dot there in the lower left-hand corner. Wait, I'll magnify it 50 times. That's an ICBM base? It will be in two years. You can tell that just from a tiny black dot. Yes. Absolutely. Wait. I'll make it even bigger. Now what do you see? A bigger black dot. Well, it's an ICBM base. They've got the missiles, and soon they'll have the hardware to deliver them 12,000 miles. I don't believe it. Look. We are here. Tacoma. Seattle, Dawson. Dawson is 800 miles to the north. 800 miles at 18,000 miles per hour is 10.2 seconds more for us to prepare an anti-ballistic missile counterattack. <laughs> Come on, Colonel. Come on. 10.2 seconds. Chinese ICBMs. National emergency. I accept that it's not a national emergency, but by the time I convince my friends in the club here that fact, the damn seals will be dead anyway. So what's the point? The point is, Senator, they're breaking the law. You can't condone a conscious conspiracy to break the law. Oh, damn. Damn it, Roger, I don't. Senator, then bring it up on the Senate floor this afternoon. Roger, try to look at things in the proper perspective. Now, in our state, unemployment is over 13% right now. Now, this Dawson project the Air Force is trying to build, it's a tremendous thing. It's absolutely tremendous. It's a whole city. It'll put more than 10,000 people to work. The, the Republicans will have my ass in November. If I say 10,000 people can't work because of a few damn seals... Well, then get them to move the base. Well, can't we move the damn animals? Senator, they've been breeding there for centuries. That's the only piece of flat coastline for 200 miles. You know, maybe intelligence knows more than we do. Maybe there is a national emergency. Come on, Senator. China's going to attack us. China is our friend. You look just like Shirley MacLaine when you said that. What? Yes, yes, I'm here. Mr. Paxton, can, can you come right up, please? I, I've got a little problem. Right away. I thought you'd never ask. Coming, Mr. Paxton. Thank you. 
Oh, I've got a list of the top ones right here. Could you call one for me, please? Oh, which one? I don't know, whichever one's the best one. No, no, it should be your choice, Professor. <laughs> well, it's your bathroom, Mr. Paxton. Why do you want a lawyer for my bathroom? I don't want a lawyer, I want a plumber. Plumber? Yeah, the bathtub's overflowing. I went to take a bath this morning and I couldn't turn the tap off. Of course you couldn't turn it off. Ah, I didn't know that. Well, it says so in a nice tight note I left in your medicine cabinet. Well, I didn't look in the medicine cabinet. Oh, why not? Well, I wasn't sick. I was just dirty. Well, why didn't you call a plumber? What? So when I accidentally overheard on the switchboard that you had trouble with that colonel and the senator, I called Bill at the airport, and he gave me the names of some big, heavyweight-type lawyers. Well, that's what you need, Professor, to help you save those seals. A good lawyer. Look, Professor, I'm a gambler, and I love to play the long shots. You see, they want to buy this place. They've been trying to buy it for the past 10 years. Well, just once, before I sell, I'd like to have me a winner. A 1,001 shot. Like you, Professor. Well, I guess we should start with Critchett, Douglas, and Levy, eh? I'll give him a call. Okay, Mr. Baxter. Shirley McLean. Little baby seals and their mothers. It's awful. Man's cruelty is unbelievable at times, Josh. I told Professor Keller not to worry about the retainer, that we handled the defense for the Chicago 7, the Philadelphia 6 who tried to blow up the Liberty Bell, and the St. Louis 10, all for practically nothing. Yes, well, someday, just for fun, let's handle the Indianapolis 500. I hear they pay much better. Oh, it's all right, Josh. You did the right thing. We'll stop the bastards. Who did you say was building the base for the Air Force? Dunbar. The Dunbar Construction Company? Yes, sir. You idiot. We haven't got a chance against them in court. They're handled by the best damn law firm in the country. But we're the best damn law firm in the country, Dad. Everyone knows that. You represent Dunbar Construction. Well, thank you very much. See you in court. Sorry. How about Jackson, Reynolds, and Doberman? Jackson, Reynolds, and Doberman are excellent. If I'm seeking a divorce. How about Townsend and Dibble? Perfect. If I've cheated on my income tax? Holtzman, do little and right. If I decide to rape someone, they're waiting to help. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too, Mr. Paxton. Uh, tomorrow, I'll call Bill and get some more names. No, thank you. No more names. No, I know exactly who I'm looking for now, and I've developed a... Brilliant analytical method of finding him. The attorneys see lawyers. Lawyers. Martins Adams. A. Adams. Now he sounds just right, doesn't he? It's against the law. You're damn right, it's against the law. Do you think I could see the lawyer now? You're talking to her, Professor. You're A. Adams? I'm Abigail Adams. You're the attorney? Yeah. See? No. Cornell undergraduate, 1969, magna cum laude. Yeah, you're the lawyer. Harvard Law School, 1973, passed my bar exams on the very first trial. <laughs> well, congratulations. Do you, uh, do you have a yellow pages I could look at? Oh, sure, I do. I'm sorry, Miss Adams, but I think that I'm going to have to... You're not even going to give me a chance? Well, Miss Adams, I need someone with a little bit more experience I'm than experienced. you I'm experienced. I am experienced. You know, I Ms. have Adams... spent the last five years preparing pleadings, filing briefs, and doing research in the back room for firms yeah. like Critchett, Douglas, and Levy, Ms. waiting Adams... for someone to trust me in a courtroom with their wife's speeding ticket. You guys are all the same, aren't you? Come on, Miss Adams. It doesn't have to do with any of that. I'm trying to protect those poor, helpless animals from the combined power and influence God of the damn United it, States Professor, Army, I the United States Senate. I may be a woman. Senate. I'm aware of that, it but I know that I can handle this case as well no, or I'm better sure than any of these 
Washington well, lawyers. Think... In fact, probably better. Well, maybe. Yeah. I'm more motivated. M I Miss... cost less. Miss... And most important of all, I've got ten times the hours to give to it. Miss Adams. Come on, you don't need to be so formal. You can call me Abigail or you can call me Abby. I'll call you Roger, being that we're going to be working together so closely. <laughs> Abigail? Yes, Roger. See, isn't that better? It's, uh, quarter to six. I'm going to go home, Abigail, and, uh, think about this, because it's a new departure. Mm -hmm. And then I will call you first thing in the morning, okay? Right. Okay, I'll call you first thing in the morning. Right. Bye. Sure. Sure, you'll call. Louis B. Anderson? No, just down the hall. Thank you. Good morning. After Adams is Agus Annie and Slopely, but they only handle the probate stuff. And there's Alan Johnson and Rucker, strictly mergers, mergers. and then Anderson, Louis B. Did you know I've been standing here since 8.30 this morning? Well, I called you at 8.30 this morning. To tell me morning. to forget it? Well, I would have phrased it a little more <laughs> gentlemanly. Did you know that the Dunbar Construction Company is a Delaware corporation that profits last year after taxes, $125,255,000? Did you know that their executive offices are located in Philadelphia? Did you know that they are extremely sensitive about their public image? In fact, last year they canceled $3 million worth of network advertising on a cop show because the PTA thought it was too violent. How did you find out all this about Dunbar? I researched it last night while waiting for my phone call. I just wanted to give it one last shot. You can go on inside. He's a good man. I took a course with him at Harvard. It's the only C I ever got. What else do you know? For a company that's building a missile base aimed at China, it sure seems strange that they just opened a sales office in Shanghai. <laughs> Abigail? Let me ask you one question, okay? All right, but let me ask you one first, okay? Okay. If you let me handle this case, I'm not going to charge you anything because I know you don't have any money, but if I win, you've got to tell everybody my fee was $25,000. Is that fair? Yes, Abigail, $25,000 is more than fair. Good. <laughs> now I can let you in on some of the heavy stuff. Dunbar contributed over a half million dollars to the Nixon re-election slush fund, and last week they fired one of their vice presidents when he announced over lunch TWA Flight 527 Chicago to New York that he was divorcing his wife and coming out of the closet with one of the boys from the mailroom. <laughs> now, do you think Dunbar's position can be shaken, and if so, specifically, how? Specifically? Mm-hmm. $23.19. Go on. <laughs> I purchased one share of Dunbar Common Stock in your name yesterday. Congratulations. You're now a shareholder in the 29th largest corporation in the United States. I would have given you an A. Yeah? Thanks. Taxi! Dallas Airport, please. Where are we going? Philadelphia. You want to go home and pack? What for? I don't know. We might want to stay over or something. We might want to change a bunch of things. This is 1979. 1979? You don't change your under things. No, I mean, I don't wear any. Can I continue? So we go there and we talk to the Dunbar people. I mean, we know where they stand in their public image. And uh, before we try to legally enjoin them, maybe we can somehow... Oh, watch her. Do you think you could stop thinking about the fact that there's a girl sitting next to you who's not wearing any under things and listen to me? I was listening. Before we, uh, legally enjoin them? We'll tell them that it's bad public relations to completely wipe out an endangered species. And maybe we can embarrass them into convincing the military to move their base a little to the north or to the south. It's worth a try. What do you sleep in? <laughs> Jeez. A driver, could you make a left at the next light, 28 Vermont Avenue? Where are we going? Won't we miss a plane? Mm, we'll take a train. I wore this outfit for you, but I think for them we should look a little more respectable, don't you? We? I don't look respectable. You look stuffy. There's a difference. This is terrific. 
just terrific. It's amazing the kind of work you can get done under pressure. I mean, usually I take like a week to prepare a lecture. This is, this is true. embarrassing. That's it, embarrassing. Oh, I once thought I was in love with a man from Philadelphia. Yeah. I almost married him. Can you imagine marrying a man from Philadelphia? Yeah. <laughs> His favorite television shows were The Dating Game and Tom Snyder. What we should do is when we, when we get into the station, we should telephone him right away. Telephone him and make an appointment with him. When we'd go to a restaurant and he'd order a steak, and the waiter would say, how would you like your steak? He'd say, mooing. Mooing? <laughs> I tried for three months to get him to say very rare, but he would still say mooing. And then he'd make it sound like a cow right there in the restaurant. <laughs> you know, if we're lucky, we can probably get it all done this afternoon. We'll stick our luggage in a luggage locker. We don't have to rent a motel. You know, I just want to tell you something. Uh-huh. As you get to know me better, you just, you're going to find that I am really a lot more human than I appear to be. It's, I mean, as a woman. I am not dependent, but I am vulnerable. What's that supposed to mean? Means I just got a horny sitting next to you. It's a train. It's a train? Yeah. Train. Vibration. This is Dawson Bay, as it uh, would appear today. Uh, as you can see, blue skies, mountains, green hills, a river, a beach. Nice, but uh, a little ho-hum. Now, out of that wilderness is Dunbar's projected community of the future, which I think is very exciting. We have homes here now uh, running from 49999 to 79000 999 depending upon the uh, location the view the extras the cul-de-sacs uh, the sewers are a part of the package uh, well let me go straight to my favorite part on the northeast edge of the town here you see that will be the largest shopping center in the state I, I think that's pretty exciting don't you we um, what what did you say your business was I'm a teacher a teacher there are the elementary schools and as you can see they're only a half a mile apart and we planned that intentionally to avoid any kind of future busing problems not that we you know anticipate any with the price of the, the homes if you know what I mean uh, isn't that uh, wonderful honey <laughs> here is the high school and that should eliminate oh there it is at any rate that's been approved by the uh, Board of Education uh, little lady, how about you? Are you a housewife or homemaker? I hate that word, housewife. <laughs> I'm a lawyer. A lawyer? Oh, my gosh, that must be very interesting work. Well, it's just something to keep me busy till I have some kids. As God intended. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Here's, uh, here's the professional building. Now, we have 16 offices still available in this building. We must stop killing the Chihuahua seals in Dawson Bay. Excuse me? He said you must stop killing Chihuahua seals in Dawson Bay. This Dawson Bay? Sorry, Harold, I mean, please. Huh? See, to tell you the truth, I didn't know any animals were even being killed. Five nights a week for the past two weeks. Mm. In another 10 hours, they'll be at it again up there. Well, no, no, they won't, and I can promise you that. There'll be no more seals getting their heads bashed in at Dawson. Are you serious? Oh, yeah. Oh, God, thank you. Thank that, you. That, thank that's you. inhuman. Baseball bats. Baseball bats. To me, that, that, that's cruel. 
I think what they're going to have to do is just come up with a more humane way of disposing of them. Here, let me get you another drink. Sydney! Wait a minute. 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 Understand, it's not how they're killed that matters. It's that they're being not killed at all, so you dumb witnesses. bastard. It doesn't matter. I've got to make this asshole understand. You, you've got to stop killing the seals. You, now. You're breaking the law. I'm not killing anything. Well, your best. company is, you dumb son of a bitch. Two scotch rocks in a... a you a must factory? stop them. What? Stop them! I don't do that. I don't make decisions like that. Well, then take me to somebody who does. The president, the vice president, somebody. The president or the vice president, they happen to be unavailable. Well, when will they be available? I don't know. They're in a stockholders meeting today or tomorrow. Where? Stockholders, Roger, well, that's even better. Why? Because you're a stockholder, remember? Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Tom. Come on, Roger. Let's get out of well, here. I, I'm really sorry. I, I'm not a violent yeah, person. Right. I don't... No, forget it. Let's just call it a fun afternoon. Yeah, forget the whole uh, thing. We have to do it again sometime. Sweet. Okay, really? thanks. Yeah. Let's get out of here. Roger. Next time I'll wear a turtleneck. Abigail? Come in. I finished the presentation for tomorrow. Oh, you're in bed. You noticed. Well, that's the beginning. Well, you wanted to read it. What do you want me to do with it? You could make it into a paper airplane and sail it over here to me, or you could take five giant steps and hand it to me, or I could hop over to you and get it. Oh, I can't do that. I tied my ankles together with a pair of shoelaces. Oh, yeah? Well, you see, it's a promise I made to my mother when I left home, you know, in case some insane rapist should break through the door and want to have his way with me. And the shoelaces will prevent that, eh? Unless he decides to turn me over. You can sit on the bed. I'm all right, Abigail. Oh, come on, Roger. Didn't your mother tell you you actually have to touch a girl to get that disease? That's it. We're engaged. <laughs> you want to know something? You want to know when you liberated people will truly be liberated for the first time? The real breakthrough? When you finally realize that your pussy is not the most important part of you to a man. It's terrific and all of that, but it's not the most important thing. And I know you know it up there in your head. But when you finally realize it in your gut, that's when you'll be rid of all that poison your mummy fed you. Come on, read it. You know what would really make that presentation work? If those people could just see the photographs that Peter took. I should have had them blown up. That's what I should have done. What time is it? 1.15. What are you doing? I'm going to get you your blow-up. Hello, Marty. Did I wake you? <laughs> Good. <laughs> what do you mean, who is this? <laughs> See, I knew you'd remember. Still a record? <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Listen, Marty, I need a favor desperately by tomorrow morning. Yeah. Good. Well, I'll be over in five minutes. Why did you hang up for? I just remembered I can't let him help me, damn it. Why not? That great lecture you just gave me on women's sexuality. Oh, I feel so inferior again. What are you talking about? Well, instead of using my brains to get poor Marty out of bed at one in the morning, I used my... Well, I can't even say the word. Pussy, 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 <gasps> pussy. Go on, call him back. Pussy. <laughs> oh, Roger. You're so
so easy. Just if I can be permitted to speak without interference. Well, yeah, um, that's um, that's uh, guaranteed under the bylaws of the corporation anyway. Any stockholder. Excuse me. Bob. Hey, Thomas. Good morning. Good morning to you. How are you, sir? That's fine. I'd like you to meet Professor Roger Keller. This is the president of the company. This is Bob Ralston. It's a pleasure, Roger. Pleasure. Tom was filling me in this morning about this seal business up at right. Dawson. And he told me how strongly you felt about it. I'm, I'm oh, very embarrassed. Don't worry about that. that. Never the problem is, I had no idea what was going on up there. No idea at all. Well, Bob, um, Roger would like to say a few words about that at the meeting this morning, but he's a little bit concerned that somebody might do something to prevent it. Wait, 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 wait. Prevent it? No, no. Yeah. On the contrary. We want to hear all about it. The complete story, Rog. Okay. Let's bring it out in the open right. where it belongs, right? Uh -huh. yeah, that's wonderful. Good. Okay, I got a rod. Okay. See you inside, Rog? Right. Tom? Oh, right behind you, Bob. Hi. I thought you'd never get here. We had trouble mounting. Yeah, the damn picture on the car was the blue. Uh... Well, Roger, Roger, this is Marty. Marty, this is. Hi, Marty. Hi, Roger. This Keller. is just wonderful. Sure. I don't know how to thank you for it. I already did years ago. I'm sure, you did. This company does what you say it must do because you own this company. It's your decision. Well, I've said all I have to say. You've seen the photographs. You know what happens up there. The rest is up to your own individual consciences. Thank you. I move that we, in all possible haste, suspend operations on our Dawson Bay project until some method is devised to support and, and save these remaining seals. Do I have a seconder for that? Professor. Professor, please. Well, I, I, I think we all agree that that was a very moving presentation by Professor Keller. Unfortunately, though, we are are not here today to vote on any resolutions. As a matter of fact, that's forbidden by the by bylaws of the corporation, any such action, unless previously provided unless for under by... Under extraordinary conditions, Mr. Dickerson, page 64, paragraph 4. Where life is at risk, a vote may be taken on a motion presented on the floor by any stockholder. It's right here in your pamphlet. That's uh, human life, Miss Adams. You are all part of a conspiracy to help destroy these poor, yeah. helpless creatures. Miss <laughs> Adams, uh, inasmuch as you are not a stockholder here, I'm going to have to ask you to relinquish the microphone. I will not relinquish the microphone. I am a You're legal representative. You're on a bunch of She's right. You are a monster. Right. Oh. Breaking the law for a few bucks. Hang on. I'm with you, Francis. Uh, my name is Henry, not Francis. My wife's name is Francis. I'm wearing her pin because I lost mine. She's gone shopping today. Oh. And if that guard touches that girl, I'm coming up on that platform to give you a couple of black eyes, Tom Dickerson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please, we, we have a lot to do today. Ladies and gentlemen, have your attention, please. Guard, that's not necessary. The uh, charming lady does have a point. Tom, you have to admit that she is charming now. Well, I don't think anyone's questioning that, Bob. Now, we must not, we must not quibble about technicalities, not with family. Now, obviously, something important is at stake here, and Tom, I think, I think we should have a vote on it. All right. Please, now, would the, would the gray-haired gentleman at table four please repeat your motion? I move that we, in all possible haste, uh, suspend operations at the Dawson Bay Project until at least some method is devised to protect the seals that are still there. Yeah. Yeah.
If I may, if I may, I would like very much to second this motion. A motion has been made and seconded that we suspend operations on the Dawson Bay project until such time as a method is devised to protect the remaining seals. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed. My name is Ralph Henry Emerson. There are 280 million shares of Dunbar Common Stock. And I hold the proxies to 279,990,117 of them. And my vote is no. The motion to suspend operations on the Dawson Bay project is herewith voted down. The next order of business is the um, proposed increase in the stock options of the executives. That, um, of course, will be followed by the complimentary chicken a la king luncheon for the iced tea and uh, fruit cup. That was a wonderful speech you gave. You know, it's too bad it isn't 40 years ago, because then when they made the movie about your life, Jimmy Stewart could have played you. Mmm, I love Malamar cookies. Would you like me to keep quiet? Yes, please. It's not me, is it? to go to Canton, Ohio. Abigail, I've got something I'd like to talk to you about. I don't think I want to hear it. I don't think we can beat them. I think they're too powerful, too glib and amoral and elusive. Roger, Roger, no, there has got to be a way. There's got to be some legal loophole somewhere that we can hang them with. I know we can find that. Besides, how can you cop out on a fight like this now? We've only been at it for five days. Did you know it took 50 years to enforce the law that enabled the blacks to vote in Alabama? 75. 75 years, excuse me. Did you see Roots? Was it great? I hated it. Abigail, I'm going to have to go back. Roger, I can't let you do that. No, I have to, Abigail. There's no point in me staying. Just a waste of the university's money. I overestimated myself a little bit. I'll talk to you in the morning. Oh, no, Roger. <laughs> talk now. Get all the bags out, will you? They'll lock you out of Alaska if you go back now. Happy. Yeah, but... I mean it, Roger. If you quit while there's even one seal alive up there, you'll never be able to face a classroom of law students again. Mr. Keller, they've been calling you every hour from Alaska. Okay, well, when they call back, I'll 
take it upstairs in my room. Mr. Paxton, this is Abigail Adams, my attorney, and we're going upstairs to talk. I want to believe you. Believe me, Roger, I know I'm right. Yeah, I'm sure. Hello. Yeah, Mr. Paxton. Yeah, put him on, please. Thank you. Hello, Peter. You put my face on every telephone pole in Juno? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no. I, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sure I don't mind being a hero. No, no, I'm not surprised at all at the kind of support you get from the town. We just came back from a, from a stockholders meeting of Dunbar in Philadelphia. Yeah, in Philadelphia. And, and we got just incredible support from the stockholders who were there. Well, no, no, I, I don't think you could exactly say it was a, a fait accompli, uh, Peter, no. No, there, there's some stuff to be done here. A parade? No, no, I, I don't think I'm going to be able to get back for that. No, I, I well, I, I would love to if I could, but I, I think probably the work here is going to take a little bit longer. And a rally, okay, good, that's wonderful. It's really, uh, it's really heartening, that kind of support. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, all power to you, too, Peter. Thank you. See? Wasn't I right? You were right. I should have listened to you. You should do a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah, once I get started, I'm not a robot, you I know. know. I know, I know, I know you're an animal. I know. Mm -hmm. No, I better go home. You are home, Roger. This is your home. Yeah. What's the matter, Roger? Are you afraid that sex will compromise our fiduciary relationship? is 93% effective, Abigail. Hunter. No, I'm serious. I mean, if you want to take the risk for 7%. Okay, okay. Just one more thing, Abigail. If it really is feeling nice and terrific for you, will you tell me? Oh, yeah. Will you say 10? And if it's really the pits, will you say zero? And anything in between? Were you kind of graded and scared? You're of? putting me on, aren't you? Aren't you? 
Oh, you are so rotten. <laughs> it about me? I always attract all the weirdos. Guess I deserved it. Yeah, you deserved it. <laughs> My back. You awake? Mm-hmm. I just realized something. No, you forgot to thank me. You're welcome. The Endangered Species Act was only passed in 1975. What protected the chihuahua seals up until then? I mean, if they weren't killed off, that means either nobody wanted to kill them or there was some law protecting them in the statutes somewhere. And we'll find it. Let's go to the Library of Congress tomorrow and find out. Dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Mm. Well, you like the idea? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like to be married. Nothing. Do you want your other pillow back? Yeah, toss it over, will you? Come and get it. Oh, oh, sorry, but there's something wrong with the bathtub, Mrs. Oh, God, it's Mr. Paxton. Quick, under the bed. Hide. Hide. Under the... Oblonder, this is 1983. Just as I thought. There's order in the court. You lied to me. Both of you. Hey! Doesn't anybody in the world know how to read? Welcome to the YWCA. Did you know it's against the law to eat a live chicken in New Jersey? What's happening in your part of the country? Stokely versus the state of Wyoming. Appellate court, May 6th, 1915. Judge Herbert L. Danzig presiding. Any person or persons killing a buffalo using a cannon, a machine gun, or any other such automatic weapon is subject to a $5 fine, or five days in jail, or both. God bless Judge Dancing. If it weren't for men like him, most of the buffalo in the country would be gone by now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a lunch break. You are fantastic. You know, it's against the law to do what we just did in 37 states, Puerto Rico and the Panama Canal Zone. <laughs> it's good, huh? Good. It was the complete works of Henry Miller condensed into five minutes. <laughs> It's the second time you've said that. You're welcome for what exactly? I don't believe it. How many times? How many times did you? How many? I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't count. Sure you count. Everybody counts. Eight. Right? I don't remember. Eight. Ten. Ten? <laughs> Ten for you and one for me. You're welcome. Thanks a lot. Terrific. Really, I'm. That's amazing. You have this. Brilliantly designed, God-given anatomy and plumbing that gives you ten times the pleasure it gives me, and you say you're welcome. I mean, it's 1979. You can admit that you get as much pleasure out of it as I do. What is it with this mid-Victorian "you're welcome" bullshit? Am I right or am I crazy? No, 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 no. You're right. You are absolutely right. I shall never do it again. Thank you for straightening out my head in that area. You're welcome. <laughs> uh.
Nonetheless, I have to admit it was so far and away the very best. I would have to say thank you. History of the hunting and gaming laws of the state of Georgia. 1,172 changes. Cougars. The convertibles, hard tops, and station wagons. I'm sorry I've gone completely punchy. It's my 15 states in punch. There's got to be a quicker way. Why did you have in mind? Maybe we should split up. Tomorrow you stay with state laws and library of Congress, and I'll move on to treaties. After all, the government is selling the land to Dunbar. Somebody had to sell it to the government to give away in the first place. Someone or some group must have owned it originally, probably still do. Which brings us up to the Manitoba Indians and the Dawson Bay Treaty. Dawson Bay? Let it hereby be known that on the... Jesus, Mr. Farkas, come here, quick! What's wrong, Miss Adams? Nothing is wrong. Come over here and look at this. It's a treaty that cedes Dawson Bay to the Manitoba Indian tribe and their descendants in perpetuity. Manitoba Indians. Well, here they are. The Manitoba tribe used to be located up in this area. Used to be. Where are they now? Well, let's see. Uh, well, the treaty that you read in the big book, well, it seems that it was broken in 1894, something to do about a dispute between the seal hunters and the Indians. Now, here we are. The Manitobas who were left alive after the fighting, 230 of them, were put on a reservation for their own protection in 1920. Well, which reservation? How do I get there? Ah. Well, according to this last letter, they're not there anymore. Broke out in 1922 and escaped. The government lost track of them. You're kidding. The government lost track of 230 Indians? Well, not exactly. According to this final report, only one of them escaped in 1922. The rest died on the reservation. But there's one left? Mm hmm <sighs> I'm going to find him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you very, very much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All we need to find is one Manitoban Indian. Since they own the land by prior treaty, we'll slap a trespassing suit on Dunbar so fast it'll make their corporate head spin. How are we going to find him? One Indian in the whole United States. What are you going to do? Put an ad in everybody's paper? How are we going to find him? There's got to be a faster way. Oh. <laughs> what are you going to do? I just thought of something. Oh, no. You wait and see. Hello, David. Did I wake oh, you? No. <laughs> you know? Ooh. Somebody asked me, Miss West, how do you keep your youth? I said, oh, I send him a check once a week. <laughs> Three and two. Three, get the fagel out of your shot. Get a close up on David. You're a big one. Craig. That was just wonderful. Oh, thank you, David. Mm. Professor Keller and I were just. Uh, you know Professor Keller. Oh, Professor Keller. You're no relation to Helen, are you? <laughs> she choreographed my act. <laughs> it looks it. <laughs> uh, the professor and I were just discussing the plight of the seals in his home state. Now, Professor, our staff made some inquiries this afternoon, and they made a few calls. And I think it was determined that the Air Force and the Dun... The construction company... The Dunbar Construction, the Dunbar construction Company have agreed to move the seals to another location. But that doesn't make any difference. The, uh, the result would be the same. The seals can only breed on flat coastline, and that place where they are is the only piece of flat coastline for 200 miles. Why can't they do it on a hill? <laughs> a little slant? They breed once a year, you see. They only have one mating one season. One chance? Yeah. Oh, what a drag. For you, maybe, Craig, but the seals are quite content. Uh, Professor, you brought some pictures with you. Yes, I did. Why don't we look at those now? Thank you. Those are chihuahua seals. Or I should say that they were chihuahua seals. Why did they beat them up so much? That's the way that they exterminate them. When those pictures were taken, there were about a thousand of those seals in existence. 
tonight as we look at them, there are possibly 300 or more. So, if anyone in the audience tonight knows the whereabouts of the one Manitoban Indian still in existence, I would really like it if they could telephone us. Is that all right? Of course. Could you telephone, please, Ms. Abigail Adams in Washington, D.C.? The area code is 202-962-3701. 962-3701. Can they call collect? Oh, yeah, sure. I know my audience. That'll help. Well, six, uh, six ten, counting the, the one from my mother. All right. First time I want you to organize a counter mail campaign. I want at least five thousand of these to hit the network in the next two weeks. Then call Charlie over at the agency. We'll buy us a back page in the New York Times, and I'll write the copy. And one more thing, get on the phone and tell them to double the men up at Dawson. Let's get it over and done with as fast as we can. Okay. It could be worse. Yeah. Jake. Sit down. Look, it's your job to take whatever steps are necessary to protect us here. We'll get onto it right away. We'll set up the camera in the girl's apartment. Then we'll bug no, them. No, no, no. Don't tell me. I don't want to hear about it. Just, uh... Jake, find that last goddamn Indian. Hire the entire Pinkerton agency if you have to, but uh, find him. We'll find him. <laughs> Who loves you? Who loves you? Your daddy loves you. Yeah, see ya. Not you, dummy. Hey, why don't you give Louise a call? Even if he didn't watch the show, somebody who knows him must have watched the show. I can't figure out why he hasn't telephoned. A Manitoban Indian who escaped from a reservation must know who he is and that we want him, or somebody must know who he is and therefore where he is. I have a terrific idea. Stanley Nelson works at the Census Bureau. He's an old friend of mine. Oh, God. I'll go see him. Well, why don't you just wait until we get back to the office and then telephone? I don't want telephone. to come from the office. I would not be surprised if my phone was being tapped. Roger, you can't be so trusting. You don't think they're stupid enough to tap somebody's phone? Yes, I do. I really do. Another $479.52 in donations. Now, that's almost $10,000. We should offer this up as a reward for finding the last Manitoba Indian. Hey, Adams, attorney's office. Yes, ma'am? Yes, I want to help crippled children, too, but these are Chihuahua, not Easter season. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. No, not at all. What is this? My license has been suspended for having a defective muffler on my 1963 Volkswagen, which I sold in 1969. Oh, that's going to be some kind of... Hey, Adams, attorney's office. A sweet 1200. 432 Pennsylvania Avenue, Washington, D.C., 21758. Thank you. Dear Miss Adams, an audit of your state taxes for the years 1976 and 1977 will be presently forthcoming. Hey, Adams, attorney's office. Now, so would you repeat your name, please? Canuck? And you're a Manitoban Indian? 
No, 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 please, look, don't be frightened. No, no, nobody will know. We will be very careful. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, we, we know the hotel. Sure, room 312, and we'll come around the back. No, we have all the documentation. Sure. We'll be there in about an hour. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> I don't even want to read it. Oh, I don't even you have to read it. Oh, wow, what for? After what the white man did to my people for over 200 years. You know, my great-grandfather was Geronimo. I thought Geronimo was Apache. Ah. My great uncle was Jim Thorpe. Now, you know what the white people did for Jim Thorpe. They took away his Olympic gold medals in the film. Yeah, but that was because he played pro baseball. That, that wasn't oh, really? because he was an Indian. Do you think that they would have humiliated Pete Rose that same way? Probably, if he'd broken the rules. But there are two sets of rules. There's the rules uh, do, for do your people you and the rules from, from my people. people. <laughs> did you sign? This petition states that... Hey, look, I told you. There's really no need to explain. I really love what you people are doing. Just give me the pen. Yeah, I've got a pen here, sir. There's six places I marked where you should sign them. Do like I do in Paris. And I, Perrier. First, quench air. Stay away from those sugar loaded soft drinks that only add pounds to your hips. Ask for. Oh, please look at me! Oh, out of the face! I'm an actor! I'm an actor! They hired me to play an Indian. It's true. Look, I'm an actor. 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 I'm that you found me out, then I get to keep the $500, and you get to keep looking for the real Indian without them knowing it. Then everyone would be happy. What do you say? What do you think, Roger? Can we trust him? Oh, sure, Abigail. Absolutely. And I think it would be better if he swore on the, on the Bible. You wouldn't mind swearing on the Bible, would you? No. Oh, we can trust them. <laughs> Dear Senor Quixote, <laughs> it seems the windmills you've been dueling with have very long arms. I was reminded of this sad fact by two phone calls yesterday and three meetings this morning. Roger, I know that sending you to Washington was my brilliant idea, and for this I apologize. But unless you stop your activities immediately, not only will you not have a job here or myself a pension, but Barnes College may well turn out to be the largest parking lot west of the Canadian border regards Dean Collier. Oh, boy. Yep. Yeah, hi, will you fill it up with unleaded? Unleaded? Unleaded, Junior, fill it up. You know what they pay grade school teachers in England? About 10 bucks more than I'll make as a waitress. <laughs> You'll get tips. This card's been reported stolen, sir. I'm going to have to keep it. And you're going to have to pay me in cash. That's impossible. I've had that card for six years. It's my card. There's got to be some kind of mistake. Now, would you go and check it again, please? All right, I'll check it in the new book in the station. I'll be right back. Roger, I am scared. Abigail, this thing's got to be some kind of mistake. For the first time in my life, I am scared of them. Those Dunbar people are playing hardball. Wait a second. They're not fooling around anymore. Come on, Abigail. You're right. The cut's fine. I'm sorry. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Behind the wheel! Jesus Christ! Stop, bro! Shoot! Fuck you! No, don't shoot, you asshole! You'll blow us all to hell! Stop it, for Christ's sake! It's a fucking gallon! 
goddamn son of a bitch called the police. Roger, we didn't do anything wrong. What are you doing? Jesus! Stop that damn thing! Shut it off! <laughs> Following us? Roger, this is ridiculous. Trust me, I'm your lawyer. So worse than all happens, they'll stop and search you and they'll find out you're you and let us go home. No, they won't. They'll put us in jail. Ooh, he's moving. He's moving. He's got a Porsche engine. I'll tell you, he's got a Porsche or a Maserati in there. I mean, I see your point if it's a matter of principle. I see, but that... Abby, I'm going to try and lose him. Oh, mommy! Something firm. God, the brakes are gone. We're going to hit those cars. No, we're not. My God. They really do float. Sorry what I did to your car, Abigail. If I promise not to get angry, Roger, do you think you could explain to me why you just did that? Why? Why? I was holding. For a few lousy joints, you just destroyed my car and almost had the two of us killed. I said I was sorry. <sighs> Do you realize also that you just blew any chance you ever had of becoming president of the United States? Well, it doesn't matter. <sighs> doesn't matter? No, I couldn't spend four years in this town. <sighs> you don't have a match, do you? <laughs> To you. I had an accident, and I'll tell you about it as soon as I get changed. Your room was searched this morning. Oh, God. Everything else? Well, the health department condemned my kitchen this afternoon. Well, at least they didn't condemn your building. Well, there was a fire department this evening. Oh, I'll move out. We both will. What? I said we both will. You need a partner, and I'm mad as hell. While you're doing the yeah. AM show with David Harmon, I'll just bop across town and get you on the very Good morning, great Roger. Show tonight. Hi, Abigail. We're busy, Mr. Dickerson. Yeah, I know. Listen, Mr. Ralston would like to talk to you for a couple of minutes. I can make sure you catch that New York flight if you could uh, come That's with me. That's a wonderful deal you fellas have worked out with the phone company. Roger, right listen, uh, Mr. Ralston is convinced he's got the perfect solution to the CO problem. Make, make everybody happy. I'd settle for pleasantly surprised. Well, uh... I think I can guarantee that, really. Why don't you hop in? Okay? Let's go. Good. Okay. How are, you look wonderful. Oh, thank you. How have you been? Oh, fine. Good, good.
That's area code 212, New York 3552821, extension 509. Tell Mr. Hartman you've changed your mind. Or copies of these will be sent out to the president, the dean, the alumni association, and every faculty member of Barnes College by tomorrow morning. After that, every law firm in this city and New York, Los Angeles, Jake, and Chicago. Jake, I want you to understand that uh, I hate this kind of garbage. It's nothing personal, you know that. It's just that uh, we kind of ran out of ideas on how to make this thing work out. It's... I think, if, if I may, Bob, I, I think what Mr. Ralston's trying to say is that we're pretty much at the bottom of the barrel here, and you've pushed us very hard, Roger. You, uh, you have to dial nine if, uh, if you want to get an outside line. I used to think the bad guys were guys like Al Capone or Billy the Kid. But I was wrong. It's guys like you. You and Tom and Jake and your secretary out there and the guy in the elevator who brought us up here and the decent-looking people on the street who work for big corporations or governments and think that they can exchange their morality for the morality of big corporations five days a week, nine to five every day, and get away with it and go home and kiss their kids and still be decent, moral people. Well, they can't. They can't. Because big corporations don't have any morality at all. Nothing. They don't have any compassion, any humanity, Excuse any... Excuse me, I'd like to have a word with my client. Roger, can we meet in the hall? Please, take all the time you'd like, but don't do it in the hallway. Uh, Tom, use Tom's office. Yeah, sure, good idea. Just make yourself comfortable. You want a drink or something, Roger? You call me crazy, man. I like those two kids. I... They're good people. A little mixed up, but good people. You like them, huh? Yes, I do. Well, I think they're both full of shit. I mean, how dare they come in here calling us the bad guys? Me. I... I was wounded twice. Once in Korea and once at the Bay of Pigs. Three times, Jake. Forgot the hooker in Miami that bit you on your pecker when you refused to pay. <laughs> We've made a decision. We'd like two copies of that, a blow-up of that, four? Two. Just two of that, and one of that for my mother. Should I write that down, or do you think you can remember it? I can remember. I'll take care of it today. Any other decisions you'd like us to make? No, I don't think so. Tom? Drive them to the airport, make sure they catch their plane. Thanks, fellas. Of course they rescinded your parade permit, Peter. What did you expect? I know it isn't just, but whoever told you that this system guaranteed justice? Well, I was wrong. The only justice this system guarantees you is the right to pursue justice. Come in. Excuse me. Uh, yes. Is the $10,000 reward really true? It most certainly is. Well, I don't want it. I, I could use the money, all right. But old Oscar wants it himself. Who's old Oscar? Old Oscar? He, well, he's the Indian. Ma'am, excuse me, sorry. Would you sit down in that chair over there and write down what you were going to say, Abby? Get me a pad of paper and a pencil, will you? Uh, why did you do no, that? I don't think that's going to be necessary. There. The walls have ears. You understand? If you say so. No, you're going to have to run it by me again, because I... I don't understand it. I... Um, we take my car to the Shady Inn Motel in Harrisburg and wait for Oscar's call tomorrow night. 9.15. She's calling us at 9.15 to tell us where he'll be hiding. But your car is a blue 1955 Buick, which is a little conspicuous. That's good. 
Or you want them to follow us? Yes, Roger, that's part of the plan. But then how do we get to Oscar? We don't. She does. But they'll be watching her. They'll be watching us. Oh, come on, they're not that dumb. It won't work, this plan, I guess. How many Alfred Hitchcock movies have you seen? Uh, I don't know. I'm one or two. Here, one more. North by Northwest. Oh, I've seen them all. So it is. Is there a doctor here in town you can trust? One I can trust? No. One who owes me a favor, yes. Not surely. Bob Rubin said Mount Sinai. He went to medical school with my brother Tom. Tom got him into the only non-Jewish fraternity at Tufts that had all the answers to the biology quizzes. Do you believe that? No. Good, because I just made it up. <laughs> what do I do with Dr. Rubin? You will phone him and tell him to be prepared. For what? And don't tell me. Don't let me in on it. I don't want to know. I wouldn't understand if I did know. Darling, it's nothing. Believe me, I had mine out when I was 12 years old. Well, they you wash you. I know, honey, but they'll put you to sleep and they'll have your appendix in a bottle before you know it. You'll have nothing but a cute a little bottle? scar on your sexy little tummy and you'll be okay. You'll be home in two days. Will you wait? Sure. You promise not to fall in love with some other dumb, unshaven chick before <laughs> you leave? <laughs> ah, oh. Easy, boys. Up we go. Ah. Okay. You all right? Yeah. I'll come see you tonight. Here's oh, her bag, thanks. okay? Thanks a lot. Bye, darling. Honey, of course I am. It's the first day of the season. Now, what are you looking at me so strangely for? I go every year, don't I, babe? Yes, you do. Have you got everything? Yeah. Ready to bang my limit. See you tomorrow night. Where are you really going, Bob? And what's the duck's name? Abigail Adams, and she's no duck, darling. She's a decoy. You eat that slop. That's well, better for you than those coffin nails you're smoking. You're gonna die from those three packs a day someday, buddy. No, as a matter of fact, I read in a uh, scientific digest. It said the person sitting next to the person smoking is more apt to get cancer than the person smoking. Thanks. Are you sure that those clowns have really found him? Yes. Well, then why don't we just go and get him? I mean, who is he? We don't know that yet, Jake. That's why we're here. Cigarette? You got nothing to lose. Come on. It's uh, Paxton, the guy that owns the Dulcie house. You sure? Right, he looks like that black actor, the, uh, the one that wasn't in Roots. Wait a 
Wait a minute, Bob. I think they're getting into a car. Back it out of here. Seen us. Let's see if we can almost lose them. Abigail, brace yourself. I'm going to make a sharp right hand turn. She'll, she'll find it all right. No, she's very bright. Bright. Yes. Louise, darling. All right, okay. You've had your turn, okay? Let, let me speak a minute, and I'll, and I'll explain the whole thing. Uh, no. Yeah, well, I'm sure she did say that, but... No, he's not, he's not hunting ducks, darling. He... Huh? Yeah, red pickup truck, yeah. No, don't worry about it, sir. She'll be on time. Yes, sir. Thank you. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Thank you. Alone means alone, Louise. Yes. Well, then I'll tell you what you do. You call a goddamn lawyer, all right? No, you don't call Fred. He's my lawyer. Yeah. They're leaving. Let's get going. Come on, move it, Tom. Jesus, now I know what it feels like to be gang-banged by the L.A. Rams. 109, room 109, the message is on the lamp, 109. They're still following us, of course. She should be getting on the bus, just about now. In a few minutes. Greyhound number 584, non-stop to Springfield, Illinois. Now, you try and catch up with me as fast as you can. Well, what if they notice that we're not tailing them? I want him to notice, Jake. Just make sure that he does. I got to run. Uh, we want them to notice that we're not tailing them. Turned around. Something went wrong. I told you they weren't that dumb. Get 
Better get to Abigail and warn them. No, slow down. Maybe they don't know anything. Maybe it's a trick. Let's not lead them there. Maybe it'd be better if we follow them for a while. Is that what Hitchcock would do? Probably. <laughs> Long ride, isn't it? Would you like a Malamar cookie? They're my favorites. No, thank you. Would you like some milk? No, I'm fine. You like traveling by bus? Not really. Why not? Because I do not like being sexually harassed by strange men. So could you please leave me alone? Me? Yes, you. You're kidding, aren't you? I am not kidding. And if you don't stop coming on, I'm going to tell the driver. Now leave me alone. Thank you. Thank you very much. I just want you to know that's the nicest thing anybody ever said to me. Cute, Tom. She left the bus at Springfield and rented a car. Bye, Bob. Uh, we'll be coming down 54 in the opposite direction about 05 minutes. When we see you, we'll just blink our lights. Alfred Hitchcock. Okay, as long as we get to them at the barn before they do, we'll think of something. Damn it, how could I lose them? They stop for gas, we stop for gas, Jake stopped to take a leak, you stopped to take a leak. Dumb, Roger, just dumb. Alfred Hitchcock. Adams? No, I'm Post Road Ann. Contact. There she goes. Here goes Roger. Good. Everybody together, no loose ends. Come on. Thanks a lot. Yeah, okay. We brought the money, and we brought some papers for you to sign. Me read first. Oh, no, don't read them, sir. We don't have enough time for you to read them, sir. If you just, just... 
Would you give him the money, please? Yeah. She's got the money for you right now, sir. Here's the money. There's the money. And there, that's that. Those are the papers. Just sign them. She's your woman. Yeah, and uh, she's my attorney too. Sign right here. What the hell's Tom doing? Siphoning a can of gasoline out of the car. What for? Jake, if they don't come out of there reasonably, we're going to have to scare them out. We got plenty, Bob. Just like high school, huh? All right, Roger. We know you're in there. You've got 30 seconds to send that Indian out of there with whatever you got him to sign. Otherwise, we're going to have to smoke you out. 30, 29, 28. Twenty-seven, twenty-six, twenty-five, twenty-four, twenty-three, twenty-two, twenty-one, twenty. Abby, I don't believe it. Ralston's got a shotgun, and that idiot Dickerson is pouring gasoline around the barn. They're bluffing. They wouldn't set fire to the barn. Hurry up. I am. Seventeen, fifty, sixteen, fifteen. Ralston. That's insanity. That's pure, absolute insanity. You got 10 seconds, Roger, or there's going to be a hot time in the Oak Town tonight. Whatever they gave you, Chief, we'll double it. Here we go. Five, four, Here, three, three, two, one. How about it, Roger? How about if we throw in another 100 thou for you and your lady? Done. Ralston, stick your money. Up your ass! Tom, did he say what I think he said? Afraid so, Bob. And he teaches our children? Light it up. Light it up! All right, Jake! Come to the front. We're on fire, Abby. The barn's on fire. The three of you get down below, underneath this box. And lie down on the floor and wait there until I get back. What are you going to do? I don't know for sure, but I'll think of something. Hereby be known on the order of Judge Hiram P. Gilliard. An order has been issued instructing the immediate cessation of the annihilation of the amphibious chihuahua mammals in this area for now and all time henceforth. What the hell does that mean? What it means, Charlie, is knock it off. It'll give us only an eight second advantage against the Chinese, but what the hell, it's better than nothing. Absolutely right, right Fred, absolutely. Now, uh, we've sent up the crew to start a land survey. When was that, Thursday? Tom? Thursday morning, right. Thursday morning, and uh, we'll have the results back in about three weeks. Of there is one problem, Mr. Ralston. What's that? Polar bears. Lots of polar bears in that area. So we'll get rid of them. We can't let a bunch of polar bears muck up the takeoffs and scare off the wives, can we? Hell no, Fred.
Ray, that's no problem, right, Tom? Right. Now, we'll get rid of poison darts, cyanide. Fast. Fast and no pain. That's painless. Coffee. Ah, come here, Mary.